Think, make, innovate. Welcome to Think, Make, Innovate. Glad to be here. This is Sarah too, and you are a student at Southeast High. Yeah. Just tell me a little bit about where we're at actually in the building. We're in the maker space in the library. Um, and what do you love about the maker space that you have at Southeast Junior High? Maker space is it's really fun, and you can do anything you want in here. And like, you can, there's no rules to it, and it's really cool. I love it. That's exactly what I love about Makerspace too. And there's not just Makerspace here at Southeast Junior High. I've had the opportunity to hang out with the Coding Club recently. Yeah. And they've been doing some really interesting things. Like, for example, do you just have a cardboard box laying around? Yeah, actually, I do. You do. That's fantastic. So their challenge uh, with the cardboard box was to actually make it move. <laughs> Not quite like that, but to actually make it move through code and using different robotic motors. That's really cool. Yeah, it was amazing to see the different kind of characters that they make and how they put it all together at the end. So I would invite you to take up this month's challenge of taking something stationary like a cardboard box and actually making it move through code. There's lots of different ways that you could go about it, and that's, again, one of the things we love about Makerspace, right? Yeah. Now, you have your own Makerspace show, right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. It's, I just show people, like, at our school, or whoever is following the channel, um, how to do stuff in the Makerspace, and, yeah. Fantastic. Do you do Makerspace challenges on your show, too? Yeah, I just created one. Tell me about it. It's about the building straw. I call it the ultimate building straw challenge. And you have to build something ultimate and post it online on Instagram and tag the Southeast Junior High Library. That's fantastic. So you actually get two Makerspace challenges in this episode of Think Man Get Anime. You can take up the ultimate straw challenge or the robotic cardboard box. For the robotic cardboard pop box, the coding club actually used some uh, components called Hummingbird Robotics, which had different servo motors that allowed the pieces of their robotic creation or cardboard creation to actually move, and then they coded it through Scratch programming, which is pretty cool. So we have a low-tech and a high-tech challenge for this one. Yes, that's, I think they'll do great. I think everyone will. Absolutely. And the biggest thing that we love about Makerspace is our tagline. And would you like to say it with me and send everybody off? Yes. All right. Have fun making. Uh, I really like when you get a code to work finally, and it does something really cool and kind of complex. And you can just remember all the hard work you put into it, and then it's kind of fun to see the results. For me, I think I like coding because of the freedom you can have with it. Like, you can basically make whatever you want. So. I, what I really like about coding is like, how once you finally get something down, you can move on to something else, and it never really gets boring. I don't know, we just found a random picture. We just searched shark cartoon on the internet. <laughs> so you get an idea of what, of what it could, like, of what, what we'd base it on. So that was your inspiration point to get started? Yes. yes. We have two flippers, and one of them is going to move up and down with the servo, and then the eyes for the penguin are going to be down with is your penguin an emperor penguin? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be ideal. They're the, only okay. the best type of penguin. Hence the crown. Yes, hence the crown. Okay. Okay, so we assembled the shark. We It's not fully assembled yet, but we have the parts for it. So then it's going to have two upper fins, two lower fins. The upper fins are going to be larger than the back than the back fins. And then we're going to have a, it's going to, the head's going to be not attached to it, but it's going to be able to open and close. This looks like an old, yeah, this is, used old, to be like an old okay. version of Scratch. Let's just take that. When Scratch used to be old, it was all That's white. fine, we'll just take that then. So, yeah, can care. we add like a sound? <laughs> what if I said it during the, the when we uh, press, when we like open the mouth? Uh, do I have to use a sound box? Oh, well, can I say yeah. it to repeat? Yeah.
I don't think you make one. I think it's uh, just you you get to play sound for scratch. You do you just do play sound and then you import your sound and then it'll let you it'll be on the Dropbox. Oh yeah, you have to press me. Yeah. together and started working. Personally, I would have made it so I could take the crown off its head. That would oh, be yeah, cool. that would be Like, so, just, just like, catch know, like, the, like, like, and spin up and take yeah. off the crown. That would be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The other way around. Okay. <laughs> that would be a good idea. <laughs> and, uh, so then how would we attach this one? Wait, that's awesome. Oh! That's amazing. Yeah. Push the wrong way. Yeah. Okay, it's definitely working. It went the wrong way first. <laughs> okay. Okay, a little, a little reworking. I think the yeah. tape got all messed up. Stop it. Right there. Then we can pick it up and put it back in the right position. Three, two. Oh, look at that. That looks 100% realistic. Okay, so it stopped working. That somewhere There was a glitch in the software, so we had to switch over to another thing and recode it. But then, just as we had almost lost hope and it was about to stop working, we finally figured a way for it yeah. to work. How does that make you feel? Awesome. Honestly, it, it makes me so happy because we worked so yeah. hard on the actual thing and then the coding messed up and we were just like, we were extremely bummed out about that, but then we figured out a way to make it work. But we were thinking of putting when we were making the shark because the shark was really hard <laughs> to make. Um, the second time we were going to quit is when like, when the program wasn't going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that but, was, the, yeah, yeah those, those, those two times. we just done too much to actually quit then. We had to, we had to make it work. Well, I guess now we have more insight on how actual animatronics work, so maybe in the future, like, if we, I don't know, we could actually learn our own way of developing, like, we could even develop our own program to, like, actually coding, for coding things like this, for animatronics like yeah. this. We could make some, some, a new way of doing this, a more efficient way. Uh, it's a, it's supposed to be a copy of what they made. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's upside down. Here we go. See, it's a little, ver it's a miniature version of what they made, and we're gonna feed it to our shark.